Hello and welcome or welcome back to Bookmark Chronicles and welcome to my office. This is the start of a new vlog. I'm doing a Net Alley art collaboration with Heather from Hugo Booktubes. If you don't follow her, I don't know what you're waiting for, go do that. But this actually worked out perfectly because Heather and I both got approved for an arc that we were going to buddy read and I just needed to get some other arcs done. My ratio is low. To me, low is like 72. Usually my ratio is pretty high and so it's low right now um not terribly low but i don't like it so we're gonna fix it so i will be reading three arcs the first one is second tie to the charm this one i was auto approved for through the hive which is harlequin trade publishing's influencer program so i didn't read the synopsis this was solely a cover pick funnily enough though i didn't actually like take a good look at the cover until today didn't notice that there were sharks on it had no clue her computer has like a little fish icon on it and i didn't notice any of that until today and it's because she's a marine biologist so i'm interested to see how this goes i believe it is a second chance for romance no i didn't read the synopsis and no i'm not going to but i'm excited to try it hopefully it's good we shall see then heather and i will be buddy reading the maiden the crocodile by jordan fuego i know nothing about this not a damn thing except that it's comped for beauty and the beast and Howl's moving castle beauty and the beast meh okay but Howl's moving castle i absolutely love so hopefully i enjoy this i believe it's a uh fantasy romance and i think it takes place in eritzar which is the world of ray bear which is one of my favorite books of all time so hopefully i enjoy this one i'm really excited to read it and the last one that I have is The Ending Fire by Sara El Arifi. This is the final book in the Ending Fire trilogy. I'm rereading The Final Strife and The Battle Drum in order to prepare for it and I'm really excited. I really hope that this ending is good because I really enjoyed the first two books. Like I said, I'm going to start off with Second Tide of the Charm. I'm currently on my lunch break so I'll probably read a little bit now and we'll see how this goes. And by the end of the month, I hope to get my ratio back at a decent number. I keep saying that I'm not going to request any more arcs, however, if the Lotus Empire pops up, I'm going to have to request it. I just have to, so we'll see. So I just finished the first chapter and I had the suspicion from the title that it's the second chance for romance and it appears that it is. The love interest is an ex-boyfriend who broke her heart three years ago, right? I'm about to say something that's gonna make me sound like a heartless bitch. It's been three years and she is still pining over this man, why? Because obviously knowing that they're gonna end up together, it makes me wonder why they broke up. And I understand that not everybody can just like shut their feelings off and that's not a thing, that's not how that works, that's not how feelings work. But three years, that's a long time, a really long time. And apparently like this breakup caused her to like walk away from her career and all this other shit and I just, over a man? I don't like that, but it looks like they're gonna have to end up working together again. So we'll see how this goes. I do like workplace romance. So hopefully it's not weird. Hopefully the reason that they broke up is something that's redeemable and not like a y'all don't need to be together type situation. So I'll keep y'all updated. I wasn't gonna update until about 25%, but now that I read the MMC's POV, I just need to say something because I have a theory and I don't like it. He is literally talking about how she was the most important person in his life and how he still misses her after all this time. He's still holding out hope that she's going to come back. If this breakup is based on miscommunication, me and the author got a fight. What happened? What caused the breakup? Because it's been three years and both of y'all are still pining after each other. I swear if it's because somebody misunderstood Y'all know how I feel about miscommunication. I'm gonna be incredibly disappointed if that's where the fuck this goes. Hello, so I finished Second Tides the Charm and um, it was fucking stupid. It was dumb. The reason for the breakup and the fact that it lasted three years all because of fucking miscommunication. Not even miscommunication, just a lack of fucking communication. Like literally that's it on both sides and mainly from hope. Yet the entire time, she was contradicting herself because she would acknowledge that it was her fault and then try to blame Adrian and be like, oh, I can't trust him with my heart again. But but you're the reason. It was your fault. What do you mean? Anywho, um, that's probably going to be like a two star. 
it wasn't good and then like it also just was unnecessarily long and i get that they're marine biologists so you want to see like the shark tagging and everything and that's fine but like i don't care i don't care so that was um not fun but heather and i are starting the made in the crocodile today and i'm really excited about this one i love jordan fuoco i've loved ray bear it is set in the same world i don't know if any of the characters are going to show up but it would be really nice if they were i think that this is going to be the one that i enjoy the most in this vlog so i'm really looking forward to it so fingers crossed that heather and i both love it because we both love ray bear hello so Heather and I are basically reading one part of The Maiden and the Crocodile each day. There are five parts total and I'm just at the beginning of part two. And so Heather didn't read Redemptor because I don't think that she's going to like it, which I didn't love it. I think I still gave it four stars, but there were certain things that I just really, really disliked about it, even though Ray Bear is still one of my favorites of all time. So we've gotten to the part where the maid, Sade, has met the crocodile and I think we know who the crocodile is if you've read Redemptor and while I think that's cool I don't like this character but I like the crocodile and I'm having a really hard time with that because I hate redemption arcs and I don't really think this person is worthy of redemption but as the crocodile I really like him and I hate that Otherwise, I love being back in Eretzar, her writing, there's just something about the way she writes, the way she writes characters, you can already see the found family building and I love that so much. So I'm really enjoying it, I'm having a really good time. I'm pretty sure there will be a reveal about the crocodile's identity and I really don't know how to feel about that because any other time that I've ever read a redemption arc, I've always been like, nah, you didn't deserve it. I don't care, you can't be redeemed. I feel differently about this one and I don't love it, but I am having a really good time. I saw today that the uh, Barnes & Noble pre-order sale is starting and I was contemplating buying this. However, Dasha got me the Illum Crate Special Editions of Rebear and Redemptor and if this gets a special edition, I need it. So I'm gonna hold off on buying it because if I'm gonna have it, it's gonna have to be the special edition if it exists. It just, it just has to be. I'm really hoping that this does get a special edition though, because so far it is really good and I'm not a huge fantasy romance person, but this is good. I'm really enjoying it. I also need to hopefully start the battle drum soon so that I can get ready for the ending fire. Actually, this lined up pretty perfectly. Heather and I reading this now gives me time to read the battle drum so that when I'm finished with the Maiden of Crocodile, I can go ahead and read the ending fire, so. So far, so good. I think this is gonna be five stars. I really do, I hope it is, but we'll see. finished reading The Maiden and the Crocodile and while it wasn't a five star read, I'm still gonna give it four and a half. I did really enjoy it. This book is very much a slow burn. So if you like slow burn, I think you will like it. I did sort of enjoy the Beauty and the Beast inspiration from it with the crocodile as a man who is literally transforming into a beast. The Howl's Moving Castle um, inspiration comes from the different doors. There are like different portals that they can travel through and if you've seen Howl's or Red Howl's, you know what I'm talking about. And I like that nod to it. It was so fun being back in this world. It really was. And I really love the representation as well. Our main character Shade does have vitiligo. She also is disabled. Um, there was an accident with her foot when she was younger. So she does use a cane. And I think that Jordan Fuego handled that really well. I am kind of pissed at her though, because I do not appreciate the fact that she made me like a character that I don't like. Because I like him in this context and in Redemptor, couldn't stand him still kind of can't stand him but also like wanted him to be happy and I, I i really don't appreciate that but i did really enjoy it 
I'm waiting to hear back from Heather to see what she thinks, but I'm glad I read this. And again, if there is a special edition, I will be getting it. Now, the next book that I'll be reading is The Ending Fire by Sara El Rifi. Have I started the battle drum? No. So it might be a little while. Actually, no more than a week. I can finish that. It's a little chunky, but I can do it. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I need to get started on the battle drum. So I'm gonna do that today so that I can go directly into the ending fire and hopefully it's good. I know Deshauna read it already and I think she rated it a four and a half. She rated the other two five stars. So that's a little disappointing, but hopefully it's at least satisfying. But I will let y'all know when I start it and hopefully that will be sometime soon. Okay, update. So I did talk to Heather. She loved The Maiden the Crocodile, rated it five stars. Really happy that we both liked it. And I know it's way too soon because that's not even released yet, but I'm ready for more. So um, if Jordan could get on that, that'd be really, really great. In addition to that, I am currently 27% into the ending fire and I'm enjoying it. However, and I'm not gonna do any spoilers or anything, but there are two characters that have been in the series the entire time that I just really don't care about. So every time we get their perspectives, I'm just like, okay. So we have four POVs all together and yeah, two of them I hate. And the other two I'm enjoying, although one of them, granted it is because of grief. She did something that I felt was out of character for her. Like she lashed out at someone and said something that I think was just really cruel. And it's funny because later she says, oh, would I have done the same thing if I was in that position? And honestly, I think she would. And so it was just like, this feels, this isn't you. Why are we doing this? So I really don't know how this is going to end because Deshauna had a prediction about something. And I wonder if that's going to come true because the way that things are set up now, I'm kind of like, is this accurate? It doesn't feel accurate. I feel like there's something missing here. So being super vague because it's the final book in a trilogy, but I am enjoying it so far and I will give y'all another update, probably when I'm about 50% or if something crazy happens. Sara El Arifi is really great at plot twists. Like we just came to a reveal about one of our characters, my favorite character, and I kind of picked up on it at one point, but I was like, no. No, why would, why would we bring that part into this now? So I wonder how that is going to change the trajectory of this character's arc, or if it will at all. I'm really interested to see how that goes, but I'm enjoying it so far, so we'll see what happens. I'll give y'all an update soon. All right, so I'm 79% into The Ending Fire, and I'm enjoying it, but one thing that I noticed is that pretty much every reveal that we got in this book I was able to predict and some of them had heavy foreshadowing so it was kind of obvious but for other things I don't know if it's because I read books one and two right before this so everything is super fresh or if I've gotten used to her writing style or if because it's the end of the trilogy so I'm just like questioning everything but actually I think it's safe to say that every reveal that we've had so far I predicted or I saw it coming, like something would happen. I'd be like, oh, so this is that and we're gonna do this, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that's not a bad thing necessarily. I do feel though, like even though I'm enjoying it, it's not like exciting. None of the reveals have been exciting because I called them. So like, I don't know, like if I had to rate it right now, I'd probably give it like a three and a half. It's not bad, it's just not super exciting. I am enjoying being back in this world though, so I'm having a good time with that. I will say though, Anor was annoying from book one. This bitch has been getting on my fucking nerves. And then John, I don't care about anything that has to do with this man. And for some reason, his chapters are the longest. Why? A lot of y'all know how I feel about fantasies with romance subplots so he's got like a little romance happening and I genuinely do not give a fuck about him or her and then they always want to pop it in at times where it's really inconvenient like we're getting ready for something big to happen and oh let's let's have our last rendezvous I don't give a fuck and then right after oh this thing's happening we could have skipped that little intermission and gotten straight to it okay I am enjoying it but I feel like something crazy is gonna have to happen at the end in order for me to give it like a four star or higher so I'll let y'all know how I feel when I finish it. Okay, quick update, because I'm now at part five, which is like the final section of the book. It looks like we're getting POVs from all of the characters, even sad characters, so I'm actually kind of excited about that. Also, it's gonna be a battle, so somebody's gotta die. 
hopefully not Hassa. I do not want anything bad to happen to her. I think she has suffered enough, but honestly, it could be anybody else. I don't care. So I finished the ending fire about 20 minutes ago and I don't know how I feel. I have like that book hangover feeling and not necessarily because I just loved it so much, but because I literally spent the majority of today reading it so that I could finish it in time for this to go up on Saturday. But also like so much happened in that final section. And while I love that we got so many perspectives from different characters, I do think there is a character that we didn't get a POV from who's a pretty major player in this book specifically and I feel like she definitely deserved one. I know I said that it's war so somebody needs to die. I did not expect her to kill so many people. I will say some of the characters that survived I wish they hadn't and vice versa. Uh, I think I'm gonna settle on a four. I would still recommend this series to anyone who is interested. I know that the final strike is pretty polarizing so if you make it to the battle drum and you still want to continue then I would recommend it. It is an adult fantasy so if that's your thing definitely go for it. Even though I was able to predict like a lot of the reveals in this book in particular, I feel like the direction of where the series went I would have never been able to predict from the beginning from book one so that's interesting but overall i will say that it was a satisfying ending to the series even though there were some things about it that i personally did not love so as a recap second tie to the charm would not recommend because it was stupid the reason for the breakup was stupid how long it took them to get back together was stupid <sighs> hope was just stupid i guess i would recommend it though to people who want a romance i believe it is closed door about marine biologists who are studying sharks the maiden the crocodile four and a half stars my favorite of this vlog and if you enjoyed ray bear and redemptor then i would definitely recommend that you pick this one up to be back in that world and if you have not yet read ray bear i don't know what you're doing get to it it is literally one of my favorite books of all time and I do not say that lightly about a young adult fantasy. I'm also the reason that Heather read it and I'm pretty sure she cried. Um, and then the ending fire, satisfying conclusion to a trilogy. I'm glad I read it. All right, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you for coming on this ride with me. It's It's been fun. It's been a time, a time was had. Shout out again to Heather. And if you haven't already, head on over to her channel and watch her vlog. If you're not following her, I don't, know why get your life right fix it i will have her channel linked in the cards and in the description below and thank you again to heather for collaborating with me i love you you're my favorite and that is all i have for you today i am so tired i'm gonna go watch love island and read nothing else for maybe the next two days but that is all i have for you today and i'll see you in the next video